Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting little knife right here. This is the Bastion Knives Braza Bro. Um, yeah, that's actually the name. It's based on the, the, the Braza, which I gather is a bigger knife, but this is the Bro version of it, um, which, okay, whatever. Um, but anyways, first off, full disclosure, I want to thank the, uh, the designer of this guy for sending this little guy along. Um, this was shipped to me directly from Bastion. We have to assume then that this is the very best quality controlled knife ever, and I've done my best not to let that, uh, you know, affect my review, and I told him I'd talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly, um, and it might be a gem, might be junky, still sent it along, so there you go, full disclosure. Um, next thing, size comparison, this is actually a very small knife, although in my hands you might not be able to tell. Um, here it is against the uh, Spydeco Delica, the Ontario Rat number two here, and so you can see that blade lengthwise it is smaller than either of those guys. The blade is coming in right around two inches here, um, and here it is against the Rat number one, and then a couple of other compact carry sort of options. Here it is against the Spydeco Dragonfly. So you can see that although the sharpened blade edge is actually a little longer, the legal edge is uh, a little bit shorter than the uh, Dragonfly. And then here it is against the uh, Spydeco Ladybug, which is another good small, small, I don't even know why I said it that way, small option um, for uh, keychain style carry. So anyways, there you go. Um, next thing, a quick note, Bastion Knives is a company that's kind of interesting, a little bit weird. Um, they tend to make a bunch of other gear. They, they seem to be another one of those sort of importer brands that makes everything under the sun because they have partnerships with factories that do. Um, they've done some good stuff. They've done some bad stuff. Um, they're not well stocked in a bunch of places, but, you know, hey, whatever, I'll give it a shot, I guess. Um, and then finally, there is no disassembly on this guy. We'll talk about that later, but it is threadlocked, shut, and free spin. And so anyways, let's go on ahead, talk about the uh, good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting little bro right here. So on the good side, I do like the size. Now, look, I am uh, made fun of regularly for liking small knives, and I agree, this is not enough knife for everybody. I mean, we're coming in here, where the heck is my ruler? Um, we are coming in here right around two inches, potentially over the line if the cop holds the knife in the right way and doesn't like you, but it's right about two inches here, and that's a size that is going to be not necessarily adequate for everybody, but it is nice in a lot of ways because it makes the knife exceptionally lightweight. Even though this is a stainless steel frame lock, it has a weight that feels pretty good in the hand. We're coming in here at 1.63 ounces for two inches of blade. Can't argue with that. Um, it is also very carryable. This guy can disappear in the pocket. It can disappear in the coin pocket of a pair of jeans. It is a very, very small carryable knife, and it's giving people an option who live or work in areas where two inches may be the line. So I have to say, I appreciate that they're making the knife at this size, even if it's not going to be the right size for everybody. Next thing, I have to say, they, they've done a steel frame lock here, but they've done a nice job coating the steel here. It looks actually reasonably good. I'm not generally a fan of coated steels, because coatings tend to wear off over time, but so far, it, it seems pretty okay, and it does lend a little bit more of an aesthetic to it than just having steel steel. Um, so I, that's reasonably well done. Next thing, they've done a full backspacer here. Now, full backspacers are a luxury that we're not getting very often in the knife world these days. So, so often we are getting things like standoffs and whatnot because it's a cheaper approach to things. Um, but I like that they've done it here. I, and especially for a knife that's geared towards the pocket, like for a keychain or something, which is how they keep advertising this guy, it's always nice to have one less area that can catch crud and that can pull things into the, uh, pull things in against the blade. So I like like that very much. Next thing, ergonomically speaking. Now, mind you, I have, as one commenter once put it, little bitch hands. So I, uh, my, uh, my experience may differ from yours, but ergonomically speaking, it's pretty well done. It's got a little jimping here. Nice little finger groove here. Makes things easier. And I can actually get like a two and a half finger grip on this guy. I suspect that most people are going to be rocking two fingers with this. But you know what? It works. And especially with something hanging off the back here, um, like a keychain or a lanyard or something like that, this could very easily work in the hand. And I, I don't feel like it's particularly unstable or unsteady in the hand. So that's that's really nice. Next thing, the clip on this guy, um, it does work. Um, it, it is a fine clip, I guess. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the fact that the ramp is too small, where I will later tell you that the ramp is too small, and that'll be a little redundant. But you know what? Um, if you're wearing thin pants, it, it does absolutely work. Um, the blade on this guy is actually nicer than I expected. It is D2 steel, and D2 is a great steel, absolutely 100%. Um, it has a relatively thin blade stock here, which is one of the constant sins of modern knife making. They're using a relatively thin blade stock here, as opposed to the overly thick stuff that you get in most places. Um, and they're, uh, it's actually ground well enough that the, the, the thin stock will actually cut. So this is a, a small 
small D2 blade that's ground to cut. That's kind of excellent. And then the, the final thing I'll note is that there is actually a two-toneness to this blade here. Well, three tones if you count the rust, but we'll get to that later. But there is a stone wash, and then there is the machine ground area. So I'm liking very much this blade. I think it's pretty excellent. And then finally, on the good side, the price on this is actually not bad at all. We're coming in at about 40 bucks here right now. Um, and I, I think that's reasonable. For the action that you're getting here, for the construction that you're getting, the fact that you're getting a decent steel, and the fact that they're probably not going to sell a bazillion of these, this is actually pretty impressive, and especially considering that's, a, that's around the same price as like your Spyderco Ladybug Man Bug kind of thing, it's clear that they're, uh, they're, they're delivering a little bit of value here. So to me, at least, all that's the good is that it's 40 bucks, which is pretty solid. It's got a nice blade. The clip on it works well if you've got thinner pants. Um, it's got decent ergonomics, especially for smaller hands, a full backspacer, nice finish on the steel, and frankly, uh, on the, the other steel. Um, and it is a, a very nice size, especially for folks dealing with legal issues. On the great side, to me, actually, the action on this guy is great. I, I think it is absolutely mag magnificent for the size. Um, very, very often when you see an unassisted small flipping knife, what that just means is that it's a two-hand opener, that it's got a tab that you press that partially deploys the blade, at which point, with enough wrist, you can coerce it out there. But this is actually a really good action. This guy fires... 100% reliably, I have never missed a flip with this guy. The detent is just dialed right the heck in on this guy, and that is wonderful. Because A, it means that the stronger detent is going to keep this guy from opening in the pocket accidentally, and B, it just means that this, this flips. Absolutely. I mean, it flips satisfyingly. It's maybe a little small to be doing the constant flipping sort of an affair, but it has a satisfying action. And so, if they're getting this action right consistently, and again, this is sent directly to a picky reviewer, this may be the best action they have ever produced, but at the same time, if they're getting this right consistently, this is actually pretty impressive. So to me at least, that's what's great, eh, is that the action for this size is very, very, very good, surprisingly so. So um, that's what's great here. On the bad side, to start with the Braza bro, really fam, we going bro? Okay, we're bros whatever. Next thing, this was launched on Kickstarter, and I gotta be honest with you, Kickstarter for, for knives, especially knives from established companies like Bastion, just strikes me as a little bit odd. The, 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 the original goal of Kickstarter was to be a place where small businesses launch something that's brand new, you know, try and get their business off the ground, whereas this there's this new trend of big companies using Kickstarter basically to raise money. It's like, well, we don't want to hire a bank, so uh, let's just use Kickstarter. I'm not a huge fan of it, um, and unfortunately, there's still not good distribution of this guy. You can't order this from an actual knife retailer, which always leaves me a little bit questioning, especially when you've got a relatively new brand or one with some inconsistency issues. I'd much rather order from a company that I know has good distribution and uh, will cover me if there's a return. So I hope the, the, the Kickstarter thing bugs me a bit. I hope they move to real distributor, distributors distributors here soon. Uh, next thing, this is probably going to be a little small for a lot of people. I mean, two inches is not a lot of knife. It works for a lot of tasks, let's be real here, and it's it's designed such that it will hold and it will cut pretty well uh, with this, but that's absolutely not something I'm loving. Um, and speaking of which, you actually lose some usable blade because of this flipper tab sticking up there. It's fine for like uh, plunging sorts of cuts, but if you're trying to cut down onto something, practically speaking, you only have this much blade to do it with because the rest of the knife is... Uh, basically prevented from touching the surface by virtue of the longer flipper tab. That's sort of the way life goes sometimes, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. And so it's a small knife and you lose some blade to the flipper. Next thing, keychain knives and flippers don't really mix in my mind. The reason I say that is, let's say you've got this on your keychain and it's just rattling around in your pocket with everything else. Um, It's very easy for something to snag on a flipper tab and partly dis deploy the knife, and at which point you have a sharp knife that is deployed in your pocket and could actually be stabbed you or hurting you or cutting your hand as you go in there. This is why I'm a big fan of designs like the Spyderco Dragonfly that don't have anything that's particularly snaggy. Yeah, maybe something could catch in the hole, but still. And with a backlock, there's actually pressure to close it again. But an unassisted manual flipper um, is a little bit scary to me. Um, and so, at some level, I kind of like the two-handedness of like a Victorinox uh, classic, or even uh, like the, 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 the opening hole approach, uh, rather than something like this on a keychain. The strong detent, though, absolutely does make this a lot safer than a lot of these other options you see out there because this is pretty hard to have accidentally come open. I'm applying a lot of force to do that, but still a little bit scary to me, and I definitely preferred using this guy with the clip, which is removable, by the way. 
Speaking of that clip, though, the clip definitely requires uh, relatively thin pockets. This is a perfect knife for your yoga pants. If you are wearing your yoga pants, it's absolutely going to work well. But if you're wearing thick jeans or anything with a, a serious seam, not only is the ramp not going to be big enough, but you can see here there's not a whole lot of room for pocket material. If we compare that to, say, the uh, Spydeco Dragonflies clip, where you have a, a great deal of ramp on the clip as well as a great deal of open space for the material of the pants, it's kind of night and day, and so this guy just doesn't clip all that well. It works okay with some pants, but um, if you're buying this for an everyday clip knife sort of thing, be prepared. You may be rebending the clip. You can do it, and at this price, okay, I guess. But yeah, that clip is a little bit tiny there. Next thing, this guy does something that is eternally frustrating to me. Um, and it happens more often than you'd think. That is the case with a good uh, flipping knife. When you close, I'm sorry, when you open the knife, what you want to have happen is that you can move your thumb over here sideways and then bring the flipper tab down onto your thumb. This allows the detent ball to get up on the blade, at which point you can close the knife the rest of the way. So you want there to be enough, basically when this hits your thumb, uh, thumbnail that is, you want the detent ball to already be up on the blade. This knife does not have that geometry and it's actually a little bit frustrating to me because um, when you do this, at this point in time, it's very easy for that detent ball to pop back off the blade, and then you have to redo the whole process, or try and push it past the detent. This could be made better by including a detent ramp, absolutely, although again, it's a cheap knife, so I'm not surprised they didn't do a detent ramp, or just by getting this geometry right, such that when you've got the, the flipper tab down here onto your thumbnail, the, the, the tent ball is fully up on the blade, so you can close it the rest of the way without that additional force. It's a little detail, but it's one that makes a significantly, uh, well, a pretty significant difference in quality of life when using a flipper, especially one on the smaller side of things. Then finally, on the bad side, um, what you've been seeing probably here is that there is a fair amount of fine motor skill involved in manipulating this guy. You pick this guy up off a table, you kind of have to get it everything in position. I mean, you see that each time it's like I'm kind of arranging my fingers in such a way that the, 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 the knife is braced here, it's braced on the side there, my thumb is up against the side of it here, but it's not, the flesh of my hand isn't over here, and, and then at that point, one once that all is done, I can flip the knife. It's not the case that, and this is largely just due to the size. You have to really get this position properly to be able to open it. Um, and without that positioning, you're going to have a bad time. And so there is a lot of fine motor skill involved here in flipping this knife, and way more so than, for instance, just thumb, thumbing open the, uh, the, the, the the ladybug here or something like that or the dragonfly. So as a result, this is really not a good choice for somebody with dexterity issues or, frankly, if you need your knife very quickly, very regularly. This is not just a pull-it-out-of-the-pants, fire-it sort of an affair. This is a slightly different thing. So um, to me, at least, that's what's bad here is that it is a, uh, a really fine motor skill-dependent knife to get position right. The flip and tab geometry is a little off. It needs a detemp ramp. The uh, clip does require very thin pockets to work well. Keychain knives and flippers are a slightly scary match. Um, it's going to be too small for a lot of people. Kickstarter use feels a little weird and the distribution's not great. And then finally, the bro, really fam. Um, on the ugly front, unfortunately, there are two issues here. First off, this is a free spinning pivot that appears to have been threadlocked shut. Um, there is no tooling on this side at all, and so when you turn this, it just rotates, 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 which means that this knife is not going to be disassemblable. Maybe you could do something like using red Loctite in there to lock it in place, and then you could pop it open. But basically speaking, this is not a knife that you're going to be able to take apart. For 40 bucks, okay, but I still don't love that. I wish they had tooled the pivot on the other side here, or just uh, made it non-free spinning, or did something to make that not an issue, because it is an issue, and especially with a knife like this that's going to be in your pocket, that's going to collect lint and whatnot, um, that's not something you, you're going to want to do. So um, I, I dislike the fact that it's it's basically locked shut uh, using that approach. The other thing that's really ugly to me is that this knife is rusting like crazy. Take a look at this guy right here. You got the, these rust spots over here on the back side here. Now look, um, it's D2 steel. D2 steel rusts. This is a, a well-known fact, but this is way more aggressive than anything I've had for D2 from other makers. I mean, right here, this is the Ontario Rat Number 2 in D2 steel. This has not been fancily treated. This has not been 
been, you know, uh, babied and, you know, covered in oil at all times. There's maybe a little tiny spot there, I guess, but this guy is really, really rusted like crazy. I don't know what that's about. Um, maybe it's a difference in, you know, subtle difference in steel chemistry. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, the, the, the nature of the stone wash here, because note that the rust isn't happening on the machine surface here. I don't know what's going on, but either way, this is rusting like crazy, uh, surprisingly so, and that's not something I'm super in love with. Um, and so, um, to me at least, those are the ugly things, is that this is rustier than usual, even for D2 steel, and then it is a loctited free-spinning pivot, which means that this knife may actually be disposable if it gets too gunky and dirty. Um, final conclusions, this is actually a knife that's a lot better than I expected. As weird as it is, um, a Kickstarter knife, well, okay, Kickstarter knives are generally crap. It's usually code for, hey, I found the Chinese factory that'll put my logo on 10,000 knives, now I just need to write some really cool sounding marketing speak. Um, and tiny unassisted flippers similarly just don't tend to work that well. <coughs> ah, pardon me. It's code for just like a two-hand opener, basically. There's usually you press the tab, and it partly deploys the blade, and then you open it the rest of the way, like, look, it's a flipper, LOL. But this is actually a flipper. Um, this is a, a well-done action from a flipper knife, and it's actually usable as a flipper. I, I gotta say, that does impress me. Um, and the blade, on top of that, is nice. It does cut things. The handle is ergonomic, at least for me. The action is shockingly good, and the price is right. It is absolutely rusty. It is absolutely small. It is absolutely Loctited shot. And, you know, the clip thing, eh, I hope you love your yoga pants. But this is actually a, a pretty impressive knife, even with those issues, mostly because of that price point. Any more expensive, this would be just a non-starter, but for... 35 40 bucks, I, I can live with a lot of that. So this is not going to be the right choice for a lot of people, and this is not the highest quality small knife ever. You get things like the right knife, Dragonfly, you get a bunch of other options. Uh, but the thing is, if you're after something tiny, then this little guy might be a good bro for you there, fam. So anyways, hope this has been interesting to you, um, that you found this review to be a bastion of honesty and excellence, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day, bro. Bye now.